Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Around the House. Today, we're gonna be assembling this three and a half cubic foot cement mixer from Harbor Freight. We're gonna make it go from this to this. So let's get started. I like to start by laying out all the parts that I'm going to be assembling. These are the tools that we're gonna need for this project. 10, 12, and 14 millimeter wrenches, two 17 millimeter wrenches, regular and needle nose pliers, Phillips screwdriver, and a rubber mallet. Step one is to attach the triangular piece to the U-shaped piece. We're gonna be using baggie number two of bolts, and we're gonna be using the 14 and 12 millimeter wrenches. Slide the bottom of the U-shaped piece into the top of the triangular piece until the bolt holes line up. Install the bolt with the washer and then put on the nut. Do this for both holes, then take your 14 and 12 millimeter wrenches and tighten them up. In step two, we're going to attach the handle piece to the other side of the U-shaped piece. We will repeat the steps that we did in step one by adding the bolts and nuts into both holes and tightening them down. In step three, we will attach the wheels to the bottom of the triangular piece. Start by adding a washer, then slide on the wheel, then add the other washer, and slide the cotter pin into the closest hole. Then take your pair of pliers and bend the tips of the cotter pin. Do this for both sides. In step four, we will attach the lower drum. I recommend that this be a two person job. What you're gonna do is take the drum and slide the pegs down into the top of the U-shaped piece. Also, make sure that the pinion shaft is on the wheel side of the assembly. Next, we're gonna use the hardware from bag number three to install at the base of the pegs using the 12 and 14 millimeter wrenches. Do this for both sides of the lower drum. In step five, we will be attaching the control plate and the control arm. To attach the control plate, we will be using hardware from bag 11, which has a Phillips screw head and a number 12 millimeter nut. Note that this is not the way the instructions tell you to install this but I don't believe that I got the correct hardware in my box. Make sure that the control plate is seated properly and then install the hardware and tighten it down. For the control arm, we're gonna use hardware from bags number five and 13, and you'll need two 17 millimeter wrenches. Remove the slug and the spring from bag five. Slide the slug into the control handle and then slide the spring on top of it. Flip over the control handle onto the shaft and then remove the hardware from bag number 13. You will have a long bolt, two washers, and a nut. I decided to put the washers on the inside of the control arm. Then use the 17 millimeter wrenches and tighten down the nut and bolt. Do not over tighten them as this is a handle and should move freely. At this point, the handle lock will be quite loose. Use a 14 millimeter wrench to tighten up the top bolt on the control arm to tighten up the tension. Once you've done this, test the handle and make sure that you can disengage the lock freely and move the bucket back and forth. In step six, we will attach the top drum to the bottom drum and install the paddles. We'll start by adding the rubber seal to the top drum using the hardware in bag eight. Use the seal to hold the bolts in place on the top of the drum all the way around. Now flip over the top drum on top of the bottom drum and line up the bolts into the holes in the bottom drum. After the top drum is seated properly on the bottom drum, install the nuts on the bottom side of the bottom drum and tighten them down. Note, when installing the top drum onto the bottom drum, make sure that the holes that will hold the paddle in the top drum are aligned one bolt back 
from the inside bolt. This way, the paddle will sit flush against the inside of the top and bottom drum. Now let's install the paddles. Don't forget, the orientation is the thin side attaches to the bottom drum and the thick side of the paddle attaches to the top drum. We're going to be using hardware from bag number four and we're going to be using 12 and 14 millimeter wrenches. In step seven, we will attach the rear motor hood, the bucket pulley, and the motor bracket. To install the motor hood, we will be using hardware from bag 10 and 14 and 12 millimeter wrenches. Slide the motor hood over the pinion shaft and install the hardware and tighten them down. Note, make sure that before you install the motor hood that you remove the screw from the pinion shaft. In my case, the screw on the pinion shaft was excessively tight and I could not remove it with the motor hood in place. Now we'll install the bucket pulley. Start by removing the screw in the middle of the pinion shaft. Install the pulley and line up the two holes on the pulley and the pinion shaft and insert the pin from bag five. Tap it in with a rubber mallet and then reinstall the screw in the middle of the pinion shaft. Now let's install the motor bracket. We're gonna be using hardware from bag six and we're also gonna be using this little orange bracket for the back of the hardware, as well as our trusty 14 and 12 millimeter wrenches. Align the motor bracket with the motor hood and install the bolt through the face of the motor bracket. Each bolt will go on one side of the U-shaped piece. On the back of the U-shaped piece, add the small oval bracket and insert the ends of the bolts through it. Attach the nuts to the bolts and hand tighten them. Do not tighten them too much as you will need to adjust this when we install the motor. In step eight, we will be installing the motor. Start by placing the belt over the bucket pulley. Then slide in the motor and put the belt underneath the motor pulley. Make sure that the motor pulley does not come in contact with any other part of the assembly. After you have the motor in position, use the bolts from bag seven. 14 and 12 millimeter wrenches will be used for this hardware. After tightening the hardware to the motor bracket, adjust the motor bracket so that the belt between the bucket pulley and the motor pulley is taut. After the motor bracket has been adjusted, tighten the nuts behind the oval bracket. Last step, step nine, wiring the switch and attaching the front motor hood. Start by removing the cover on the back of the switch box. Slide the motor wires into the hole on the side of the switch box. Then use the black clip from bag five and wrap it around the wires. Slide this clip along with the wires into the hole on the side of the switch box. Now using a pair of needle nose pliers, remove the ground nut. Slide the ground wire over the ground bolt and then tighten up the ground nut. Then connect your black wire below the black wire and install your white wire below the white wire. It should look something like this. Now put the cover back on the switch box and tighten the hardware. Lastly, we're gonna use hardware from bag nine to reinstall the front motor hood using a screwdriver and a 10 millimeter wrench. Once you have the front motor hood seated properly against the rear motor hood, install the hardware and tighten it down. All right, now that we have it built, let's see if it works. All right, now that we know that it's running, we actually have a 10 by 10 section that we need to pour some concrete at one of our project houses. 
So that will be the next episode where you can see this actually working and in action. So join us for the next episode. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching. If you like this episode, please hit that like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.